friends, welcome back to Trendy DIY 29 and I'm back with another video. Now guys, in the last video, I told you guys about my new uh, plant setup and it's right behind me. Isn't it great guys? Like look at this. I'm going to give you guys a closer look because you can't see all of it. But I literally have, there's three levels behind me. Um, I want to say that this actually is a five tier, but as you guys can see, I moved it um this one tier up i have the light back here sitting on it these are regular shop lights that you can get from any uh walmart i paid 20 bucks for the shop light just make sure that it says 5000 um 5000 lumens you want to make sure that it's daylight because that is very important 5000 lumens that will give you a lot a lot of light good enough for your seedlings your plants and all of that so um because these are all the plants for my plant sale and the plants for my yard. And then I have some more plants right here um, that need to be separated. And then over there that you guys can't see, I have some more plants on a heat mat that are germinating. Um, but I just wanted to talk to you guys, show you my little setup, show you guys how I go about growing hundreds of plants in a small, um, in a small space. Because I'm literally in my dining room. You guys know I live in a regular um, a modest American style home, you know, I don't have acres, you know, I don't have chickens, land, extra land. I have a regular backyard and a regular size house. So this can be done. And I just want people to know that you don't have to have acres. You don't need to be living in a rural area. You do not need to have, um, to own your property. These are all the myths that people have in, a lot of the things that set people back from getting started. So I just want to go over some things with you guys and share my beautiful plants with you. So let me just show you guys what's growing in here that needs to be separated. Now, one thing I can say, if you guys looked at my overseeding method video, if you not check that out, definitely check that out because I talk about how I grow so many plants in such a small spot. Right here, I have a corbachi pepper, guys. And it's pretty healthy. One thing I've noticed about some of my peppers is that they are growing really like windy. Like if you guys can see that and I don't really know why. But that's the corbachi. And the good thing about peppers in here and also this is a true black brandy wine. You guys can see it's very healthy and look how many plants is in here. There's like a lot of plants in there. I have the Tam Jalapeno. If you've never grown a jalapeno before, the Tam Jalapeno is like what you would call like the gardener standard. Like this is the, basically the basic jalapeno, the more, most popular jalapeno that most people start off with growing in their garden. Really good germination. The plants don't get too big. They really don't need, um, you know, that much love and care. Then right here, I have the Cubanelle, and you guys can see the Cubanelle is doing a little twisty thing, too. They don't look as healthy as the uh, other two peppers. I have Hungarian Yellow Wax. Now, these things are freaking prolific. I literally had a pack of seeds of these Hungarian Wax Yellows, and... I want to say that I maybe had got them from the dollar store and they just sat for years and I grew them maybe two years ago because they didn't make it in the garden last year, but two years ago and they were really prolific. So if you guys check out my old garden videos, you will see um, how prolific the plant was and the plant really does not get that big um, and it can actually hold a nice amount of peppers and it doesn't fall over. I didn't need to stake it or anything. And I have a video, if you guys grow these and don't know what to make with them, there's a video on my channel called How to Make Stuffed. I think if they're stuffed with crab meat and cheese and they're deep fried, they are so good. They're like massive jalapeno poppers that I put crab meat and cheese in them, but they're not jalapenos. I make them with these and it's so good. So check out that. All-time favorite, Cherokee Purple. Now, the Cherokee Purple is a late comer. Now... I will say mostly all heirloom varieties are late. The Cherokee Purple was one of the last ones to ripen in the garden, but they were really big fruit and they were very, um, very, I want to say uniform somewhat. They were massive. 
they were just very, very beautiful, pristine fruit. But one thing I can say is that at the very end of the season, I had four or five on a plant that were massive and the cold set in and they did not get to ripen. And I tried to take them inside to ripen and they didn't ripen. They just rotted. So I don't know what was going on with that, but yeah. So keep that in mind. If you do grow Cherokees or if you grow any other type of like um, heirloom type tomato, they are usually the last in the garden to ripen. So if you want tomatoes throughout your season, I definitely recommend planting different types of tomatoes. For instance, your cherry tomatoes are always the first ones to come in and they're the last ones to leave. So always make sure that you make space for cherry tomatoes. Um, and you always want to make sure that you grow some type of, um, maybe some type of hybrid or some type of determinant variety. Because then the determinate varieties and the hybrids tend to put on fruit faster. The fruit tend to be more uniform. The plants tend to not be um, as susceptible to sickness and insect damage. So if you want to guarantee a harvest, then make sure that you grow some determinants and some hybrids. And one that I can tell you guys is really good one is called a patio hybrid. They don't get really big. They're bush compact type plants and they put on a lot of fruit. I did grow those. Um, so if you check out like some of my very first garden video, boy, have I came a long way. Like I was looking at those yesterday. And if you guys look at my videos, you will see how fast I grew, how I came a long way. And you can do the same thing. This is Dr. Witchy's Yellow. Only reason these are really, really tiny like this is because I already repotted up the really large ones. And these were just some that were left over. Um, and I ran out, I ran out of pots. Like literally, I have ran out of these little um, seed cups or potting cups. I get these from Amazon. Now they're very, very like cheap. If you guys see that, they're very like flimsy. But I'm selling these with a plant sale and I'm using them just to up pot. If you're careful, they won't break and you may be able to get another season out of them. But all of these, the majority of these are being sold. So I didn't want to spend my money on super expensive pots. When I knew people were going to buy the plant, throw the pot away and put this in their ground or put it in some fancy planter. Um, so why well, spend a lot of money on these pots? But next year, I'm definitely going to look into buying these by like a case, like thousand or something, because I've literally ordered... The first order was 100. Then the second order, I want to say, was 150. And then the third order I just ordered was another 100. So that's how many plants, guys, that I got going. There's a few hundred plants. But this is the big rainbow. And out of all the plants that I've started, and these were left over too when I was up potting, I ran out of pots again. So I just threw these little baby ones. Because what happens when you overseed, you will have some, if you, especially if you put a ton of seeds, you will have some tomato plants in the little cup that will stay small like this. And then you'll have other ones that are massive because their roots took up more space and they're getting more nutrients. It's perfectly fine. I like to just up pot these and see what happened because I look at it as like, if I can get this, you know, tomatoes and like mostly plants in a nightshade family, they're really good with like recovery. They're really good with transplanting and stuff like that. That's how you can get away with overcrowding them. Just the same way what I did with these peppers. I did the same thing. Overseeding method with peppers, like you guys can see here. I did it with the peppers right here, the tomatoes that you can see here. And I just literally threw in, I don't know how many is this, three... Six, nine, twelve, fifteen. There's sixteen or seventeen tomatoes in here, and they are five jalapeno plants in here. These separate really well. They are um, very, very resilient plants. The nightshade family. So you can do this with eggplants. You can do it with peppers. You can do it with tomatoes. I have not seen any of my plants like shock or act crazy or die. Now, when you do transplant most plants, like when you up pot them, you will see that they'll droop a little bit and look a little bit funny or funky for a few days. And then once you give them some water and they get, you know, used to the spot that you put them in, they will be perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. But one thing that I will tell you guys is that when you're going to harden off these plants, something that I don't think that enough people talk about is that when you're hardening off plants, when you have your seedlings, I, I thought I had some seedlings. Okay, they're over here. Let me show you. They're under some lights. Like, for instance, I just started this. These are what you call the 
Fatterly Tomato. They're growing a little crazy because they're reaching for the light, but I just made the light um, closer today. But when you're growing these little seedlings, like these bigger leaves are what you call like their first, their, their very first leaves. And the first leaves of every plant normally do not look anything like the true leaves of a plant. Then eventually after these leaves come in, you'll get these what we call true leaves, which are the ones that are recognizable that you know are the leaves that look like the leaves of the adult plant. When your plant, when your seedlings have um, these small little leaves first come on, you can start taking them outside. Your seedlings have built-in UV protection when they pop through the surface. You don't have to worry about burning your seedlings by putting them outside. As long as you put them outside, as soon as they pop the surface, I've been putting these outside every day since they popped the surface. And what I'm doing right now is basically they already have UV protection in them when they're um, small like this. So I don't have to worry about the sun burning them or anything like that. But what I'm doing is I'm making them strong. And as the real leaves, the true leaves come in, they're being exposed to the sunlight that I'm when I'm taking them outside every day. So basically when these get big, after I take them outside for like a week or two, and these get a nice size and they drop these outer leaves, they're already hardened up. I don't have to worry about doing it. What most people do is they wait until they get a plant. Let me get this one. He has a little bit of sun scald. That's what can happen, guys, if you don't make sure that it's in the shade. I have some little bit of sun scald, but he's recovering um, okay, so I'm not worried about him. But... This is a big rainbow. And out of all the tomatoes that I've grown, these are the biggest. And all these plants were started, the majority of all of them were started on the same day. So this big rainbow is a massive transplant, right? I am, this plant has about maybe two more days to go outside before I feel like he's 100% hardened off. But I noticed that when you harden your plants off when they're larger like this, this is the stuff that, that can ha happen. And you can see, you can tell that it's sun scald because you see that dry white on there. And these plants are taller than the rest of the tomato plants. So even when I take them outside and put them in a shaded area, this is still sticking up significantly higher. So it's still catching way more sun. Um, but this is the stuff that can happen. You could damage your plants. But when you take your plants out earlier like I did with these, once these plants grow to the size of this, I don't have to worry about taking it outside and the tomato being so big and the leaves being so broad that it's just picking up too much UV light and it starts to burn because these will already be hardened off. So I can just leave them in my house. I can take them outside just because even if they're hardened off, I still like to take them outside if they're going to be in the house too long, especially when they start to get big like this, because you want them to get used to when and all that. Even if you harden them off for seven days, eight days, I still will like until I have my plant sale and stuff, these may stay in the house for a little bit, but I'm still taking them out on days once they're hardened off that may have a little bit more wind or days that may be a little bit more um sunny because I want these plants to not revert back to getting too comfortable to the, the temperatures and the um, conditions inside my home. Because what you'll end up doing is just having weak plants. Yeah, it'll be hardened off, but then you put them out in the garden, you have a bad rainstorm. They're not used to being beat up with rain or they're not used to being whipped around in the wind. They're going to end up snapping and dying because this trunk is not going to be strong enough. So you want to think about those things. This is a new product, guys, that I just started using called Dr. Earth. Um, it's an organic pump and grow, and it's a 3-2-2 solution because I've noticed a lot of these bigger box companies like miracle Grow and stuff like that, their stuff has way too much nitrogen. You don't want to grow. Like nitrogen is good when the plants are a good size, but when you're growing indoor plants, you don't want to give your plants entirely too much nitrogen because what's going to happen is they're going to get massive like this. Or they're going to get real bushy and then you're not going to have enough space for them underneath here. Because remember, when you use the overseeding method, make sure that you have enough space so that when you separate your seedlings, they all have a place to go underneath the light. That is very important because 
I did not do that this year. And that's why I had to rush and literally buy this at 10 o'clock at night because my seedlings were going to die. And it was not enough light. There was not enough shelving. I underestimated how many seeds I put in because everything fit nicely and perfectly. But once I separated these into their own cup, this one cup turns into 17 cups. Dude, did, and I didn't have space to do 17 extra cups. So I got this. And as they get bigger, as your plants get bigger, they don't really need as much light. Like right now, my plants are on 12 hours still. I'm about to switch it to eight. They really don't need 12 hours because they're um, very mature plants and they really don't need as much intense light either. So keep that in mind. So just keep in mind, definitely guys, what I'm telling you about these seedlings already having their own UV protection when they pop the surface. Just start bringing them outside. This is a hell of a lot easier to take outside every day than taking outside 15 of these. I'm just saying, you can take this outside every day. It got 15 baby seedlings in it, but you can grab, what, three of these, take them outside, and this could be 30, 35 plants. And you take them outside for a week or two. Once they shed their other leaves, they get their, you know, their true leaves, and you take them outside a few more days, you'll be good. And you will know when your plants are hardening off. That's a question that I used to have, and you will definitely know because you will see the leaves well, at first when you grow them indoors, the leaves will be, this is not really a good variety to test it on because this is a potato leaf variety. And if you guys look closely, the leaves are shaped like how the potato plant leaves are. And that's the true black brandy wine. Another potato leaf variety is the pink brandy wine as well. But like, if you look, I'll use this one on this Cherokee purple. This one has recently been getting hardened off, but you see the leaves are kind of light. They're lighter green. It is a lot of plants in here, so I know it's because they're like killing each other for nitrogen. But other than that, your plants, when they're hardened off, they will become a deeper, darker green. Like how the top of this plant, you can see it's getting deeper and the lower leaves were lighter. You see that? This one has been taller than the rest, like I said, so it's getting more sunlight. So they will get a deeper green. The leaves will feel more thick, more leathery. And I've also noticed that they will also become more fragrant. Like you will smell super strong tomato scent. So I'm just going to show you guys real quick of what I do to uh, break down uh, my plants. Now, right here, I have some seed starting potting mix. You do not need this. A lot of people will tell you up and down that you need seed starting mix. This is like $6 for this thing, almost 6 bucks. Not that expensive, but when you're doing as many plants as I am, when you're doing two and three and 400 plants, $6 for a little bag like this can add up. Because I can tell you guys, I used, when I was starting all of these plants, I used... I don't even want to, one of those big bags, like this big of the miracle Grow organic potting soil, which is like $11, $12 a bag. I used a full entire bag and had to go to the store and buy another one. So that's how much dirt I use for all of these plants. So you're going to need a nice amount of dirt. And that's the reason why I have to go back to the store and buy more dirt. Starting a garden, I always say the most expensive thing is going to be dirt. And then if you want which you call um, a protege garden, which is basically a garden that it's, it's a dual purpose garden. It's a garden that is edible. It's a garden that is beautiful. It's a garden that um, everything, all the elements work off of each other so that it is a, it's a beautiful space that has edible plants with non-edible plants like flowers and shrubs mixed together to make a beautiful, like that, a beautiful um, garden, basically. A beautiful edible garden that is mixed with other non-edible plants that is designed using, you know, different angles and different um, heights to give you an overall look of just overall beauty. That is a simple way of describing a protege garden, but um, maybe I'll make a video to go more into that. But if you're like me and you want your garden not to just be functional, but you want it to be pretty, you're going to spend more money. I'm just saying. But that, do not go crazy on like those um, LED garden globe things and all of that because I went crazy on that stuff and within the first year, a lot of that stuff got broke from storms and stuff like that. So save your money um, and don't 
like go crazy with stuff. Make sure that it's super durable. But I'm going to show you guys what I do. And this is just a little shoe box, I want to say. Um, this was a set of four of these Sterilite 12 quart containers. You can get these from Walmart. That's where I got these from. You, you can get four. These are really, really handy because... I like to do a lot of my planting, especially starting seeds indoors. You're going to be doing this in the wintertime, so you're not going to want to be outside in the freezing cold in your garden trying to get plants together. So I like to do this in my dining room, at my table. You just need a good little bucket. You have some dirt. And then the plants that you want to separate. So I already have some true black brandywine separated. So let me do one that I need more of. So... I am going to do the one that I really need to put out because it's popular. I have my Tam jalapenos, guys. And what I do to separate them, I have a little thing of water. This is for when I'm mixing up my dirt because you always want to start with moist soil. I take this as pretty dry because you don't want to let your peppers just sit in moisture. It can rot the stem. So I always like let my seedlings dry out. Once I see that the leaves at the bottom start to limp just a tiny bit, then I'll give them some water. But you do not want to overwater your seedlings because what you're doing is washing away all the nutrients and stuff that's in the soil so that your plants will start to turn light green or yellow. So once I make sure that this is nice and moist, guys, I literally pop it out slowly. I just go around and squeeze it. Be very gentle, especially... If the roots, you have any type of roots in the hole, if it does not come out, I'll take a little bit more water and I'll dump it in the back where the holes are. Because sometimes it just didn't get, you know, the water just didn't drain all the way down to the bottom. And work my way out. And it's in there tight. You just want to squeeze. Do not pull. Don't force this out. Because you have the roots in here. You've grown a lot of plants. And I say the best thing is to, if you can, separate them a little bit earlier. This is kind of like really late, but I don't have a problem with it. And if the plants do shock a little bit, I still have weeks, a few weeks before they're even going to go out into the garden. So they'll be able to recover. But it's not coming out. So I just keep squeezing and give it a little tap. You just don't want to pull on roots and I let that come out be very gentle now I'm going to show you guys this roots now you see the roots is starting to get thick I'm taking this out probably a little bit I should have took these and separate them maybe a week ago because you don't want to see too much coiling of the roots like that and they're kind of tight so instead of trying to rip these apart what I'm going to do is I'm going to take more water and I like to just pour it into the roots, into the dirt, because I want this to be wet, because I want the soil to easily be able to, I don't want to force the plant to do anything. So I'm just going to massage slowly. Now you will hear a few cracks, but you want to try to keep as much of that root ball and as much of that soil as possible. And I like to open it up and now you can see the individual plants going across like so. And I will just jimmy it, shake it like this. There's one plant. And you see this root ball? I'm going to sit it directly into my bin on the side. And I do that for each one. Massaging it a little bit. Some of them you will have to tear, but the ones that you feel like you have to tear a little bit, I like to put a bigger root ball. So look how big that is. Try to leave as much attached as possible. Now you will end up with some that just seem like, okay, not hardly, no root ball is going to come out. I plant those regardless because it still may grow. Worst thing that can ever happen when transplanting or doing anything is that they die. That's the worst thing that can ha happen. But if you kill them and throw them in the trash, you'll never know. And that's throwing money in the trash, especially if you're planning on doing a plant sale. Even if you don't want to take on doing a big plant sale, you could just start extras. And if all of them germinate, then sell the rest of the ones that don't and make a little bit of money back. So just separate them. 
Look how healthy those roots is. And I'm going to show you guys how I have it. They're just laying inside of this container, separated. So next thing that I'm going to do Okay, guys, so I'm back. So as you guys can see inside of my container, I have my little plants just laid up in here. And you want all your plants laid out. And it's wet in here. So you just want to make sure that you keep your things, your um, roots and everything together. And I'm just putting them over here so I know how many I need to pot up. And this is basically the easy way of doing it. So as you guys can see, I have five plants that I just took out this little thing. If I would have been growing five plants and five things, it would have been so many, so much that I would have had to do. You know, so many plants and would have took up so much space. And then what, how would I have fit everything and had everything get adequate light because... In the beginning stages, that's when they need the most light. So, you can use any soil. This is potting soil, seed starting soil. I really shouldn't even be using this. This is really soft. It really doesn't matter. You can use regular potting mix. Just don't use top soil and don't use anything that says garden soil for in-ground use because it's going to get too compacted. But any other soil, you can use it. Just make sure you sift out or pluck out the big pieces of mulch and wood. So I'm going to go ahead and get my little Amazon containers that I get. I will be putting the um, link in it in the bottom of this video, guys. So if you want, you can shop um, Amazon and get the exact same ones. I ask that you guys please use the link that is in my description. I make a small amount of money from that, but it greatly helps the channel. So this is how they come. I'll show you. This is just the 100 pack. You just get a stack of them. And what I've learned is that these things will stick together. So make sure you're only getting one. If it feels too sturdy, you got two of them. So I have one. You guys can see how like flimsy that is. When you fill it in with dirt, it'll be perfectly fine. I take out exactly how many I need. So I know I have five peppers. So I'm going to take out five. And I literally just toss them anywhere. Like I really don't care. Not a big deal. And then I'm going to take my mix and I just like to, this is why I work in this down. If you want a bigger tote, you can, but I like this tote because the sides is low and I can sit at a table and do this. If you use a big tote, you probably won't be able to sit down and do it because um, the tote is going to be sitting so high up off the table. You won't be able to see on the inside. So this is just an easy way to do it in your house and keep your house somewhat dirty but you will still have dirt all over your floor i'm just being honest so i pulled out all my dirt and i'm just gonna wet it up always work with moist soil guys and that's what this little spoon was for always work with moist soil because it really helps you want your roots to go down into something moist and then they can Right out now. You don't want it soaking wet though. That's why I say mix it together with a spoon because if you just try to dump water on top of it until you think it's wet, you might end up flooding it and it may look dry on the top. And then once you mix it, it's too wet. Like, guys, you can make a lot of money from selling plants. Like, if you feel like gardening is an is an expensive hobby have a plant sale and cut your cost this will be my first year doing a plant sale but believe me i don't know if you guys have seen how lowe's and home depot look but if you see how lowe's and home depot look around like i'll say the end of may middle of june 
all them plants is picked through people and their mama is in their lines in the garden section be all the way down, wrapped around the store, okay? People think about their gardens at the last minute when they see everything growing and they see the real gardeners who house is already set up with the beautiful plants, then all of a sudden they want to go. So if you got plants that nobody else has, believe me, you're going to sell them. And the plants are so high at Home Depot and Lowe's, you can actually sell them and get more money than the average person. A lot of people on YouTube say, oh, sell them for a dollar or two dollars. I'm sorry. If the big box stores can sell a person a one lettuce plant for five dollars then why can't you sell a plant for five dollars i'm just saying if they're gonna buy it from a big box store but what, what you do is you just make sure you have varieties that the big box stores don't have and then they either buy it from you or they can't grow it because they're too late in the season that's what i do my plants are three to five dollars a piece and i would never sell a plant for a dollar it's too much work unless you're gonna unless you have a greenhouse and you start them outside and they're just sitting there that's one thing but i'm just gonna pack the dirt in and like tomatoes, you want to not do it that deep, but for a pepper, you don't want the pepper's um, stem to be too deep down. Maybe that was too much, but I fill it almost all the way up the peppers. Then I grab the root ball and this root ball is pretty big. You don't want to try to separate it. So I'll just dump a little bit dirt out, out the center with my finger and just sit the plant down in there. Don't squish it. Because you, you don't want to jack its roots up. Just have it, sit it down in the hole. And then I'll put dirt on each side like that. And now I'll just pack it down. But you don't want to like push, push like too hard. Just pack it down. If you're going to push, push around the edges. But don't push in the center too hard where that root ball is. And then just add more dirt. And you see, I just go down like two fingers like this. And just like that, that should be good enough. You want to make sure that your plant is sitting up. And I like to just go around. You do not need to fill your pots all the way up to the very, very top. That's another thing. Because if you fill them all up to the top, for one, you're going to run out of soil fast. And your plants just need just enough dirt so that everything is covered. None of the roots are showing. And also, you don't want to fill it all the way up. Because when you go to water your plants, your soil is going to splash out. It's going to overflow. And it's going to make a mess. So make sure that you have at least about a half an inch, a quarter of an inch of space like that. And there you go. That's one that's potted up. But most important thing, guys, I cannot stress this enough. Make sure that you label these. Do not put these and think that you're going to remember what they are. Make sure that you label them. I've tried two different ways. First year that I was gardening, I did the um, little stakes. Do not use those. They fall out. Please take it from me. I dropped my plants in the floor um, one time and I, all of them had the little sticks in it and I didn't know what was what because nothing has sprouted. And like I showed you guys earlier, when plants sprout, all of their leaves look identical. They don't look like the plant. And even when they sprout, if you're growing a whole thing of different tomatoes, how are you going to know which variety of tomato that is when they all look the same, unless you're growing like a, a potato leaf variety, you might be able to figure out your potato leaf varieties, but that's about it. So please, Please, please don't use them six. They fall out. And I've even done, like you guys see this, I used uh, scotch tape and wrote everything on there because these are my personal cups that I'm going to reuse years after year after year to plant my garden. So that's why I did that. I at first put the tape on, side, on the side of these little cups that I'm supposed to be selling at the plant sale. And I noticed that over time of watering these, the tape started to peel off. Do not put tape on these either, okay? The tape will come off. You will not know what they are. I panicked, okay? I panicked when I found like 15 of these without a um, label on it. But then I remembered that they were all true black brandy wines because they were potato leaf variety. And I had separated them and it was the day that I was hardening them off. Long story, y'all need to know all that, but... Yeah, please just write it with permanent marker on the side. You can thank me later when you know exactly what in the world you planted. And that's what I started doing, like this Dr. Witchies. Write it on there and make sure you're using an industrial strength Sharpie. Industrial strength, because any other Sharpie, the crap will wipe off or um, get faded. So just please just do that for me. Only reason I'm not writing mine down right now is because I don't know where my Sharpie is. But I'm only going to separate these two. Um, jalapenos and I'm putting them directly next to me and they do not look like any other plant up here so 
I'm not taking my own advice. But that's basically all you guys have to do. Fill it up. And I like usually once you do it, you can get some speed. Like seriously, you can get some speed and get this done. Because it, it's exciting at first. When you do it, it's exciting. But after you do about 300 of these, it's not exciting anymore. You just want to get the shit done. Like seriously. So I'm just going to add in some more dirt. Press it around, like I said, with the two fingers. You don't need to fill it up all the way because believe me, you're going to run out of dirt. If you plan on growing as many plants as I am, buy more than what you think because I've been to the store. I've been on Amazon like four or five times already. I keep running out of pots, running out of dirt. Run, like Just buy a lot if that's what you're going to be doing because if you don't use it all, you can use it next year. Boom, I got another one. And then I just would keep doing it. You guys don't need to see me do all of these. But I wanted to show you guys how I go about separating it, separating my... um my transplants when I use the overseeding method. But if, say for instance, you have something to do and you can't finish these, these are perfectly safe. Don't feel like you got to throw these back in. What I will do is I will literally just leave them in here like this. Make sure they got a nice amount of soil. If you have grow lights on, you really don't want your roots of your plants exposed to, to light. So I'll just toss a little bit of dirt on their roots. Don't push it down because you just let them chill out here until you come back. And then take a little bit of water and just literally, I put like a drop. Because these are peppers. Peppers don't need wet feet. They don't like wet feet. So put a drop of water on each one and I just leave them in there. Just like that. Leave them in there. When you come back, they'll be okay. And they won't like wilt down. But if all fails, like when I ran out of this one, I literally just threw these back in here and called it a day. And they're perfectly fine. Because I have so many of them big rainbows. I was like, if they die, oh well. But... I didn't want to make this video too long, guys, but I'm going to take you guys now over to show you my uh, setup. Okay, friends, so I just got up. I'm coming over here to show you guys everything that's growing. Um, these are little shop lights that I'm telling you guys about. It has a little uh, pull cord. Right now, my boyfriend, he MacGyvered this thing with this string because I need to use all the levels. And in order for me to have a light above this, he put some string up there. And you can see it's just sitting on like some crisscross string. Not the most safest thing. It has fell down a few times, but it's all right. Over here, guys, I have these lettuce leaf basils. Now, these lettuce leaf basils, look how beautiful these are. These leaves are supposed to get massive. Like, these leaves are supposed to get... Big enough that you can use them um, like a tortilla or like a wrap. So that's really, really cool. I can't wait to try them. I don't know. This pepper, I did have them all together. But sometimes when you move stuff in and out the house, you move stuff and put them on a the wrong tray. But this is a Grand Bell. Very, very healthy. Now, the other day, guys, I had to go through and pluck all the uh, pepper pods off of my peppers and I had to pluck all of my tomato flowers off my tomatoes like these things are ready to grow down here I have my onions and this is literally guys a freaking use what you have and this is a good example this is literally just a regular rubber made food thing that you put your food in it has holes drilled on the bottom and I literally just threw a whole bunch of seeds. Overseeding method works very, very good for onions as well. Just throw a whole bunch of them in there. Let them grow. You want to start these early. Like I started these in February. Because you want them to get um, a nice stockiness to them. Like you see how stocky this one is. You want them to get somewhat stocky before they go out into the garden. So uh, I cannot remember, guys, what onion variety this is. But another thing, when you see your onions doing this, guys, Come in with some scissors and give them a haircut and just cut them off. You you can use these and throw these into soups or um, you can freeze these. You can eat them, throw them in the salads, whatever. But trim these. You don't have to leave these long like this. Only reason I left mine long like this is because I wanted to show you guys the amount of growth. So I'll probably be cutting these down today. Over here, these are just adorable. These are the baby habanadas. I don't even have to look at them because habanadas and habaneros, their pepper, the plants are pretty compact plants. But look how beautiful these are. So those are habanadas. 
This is one with the question mark. When you lose something, just put a question mark on it. And make sure you don't sell it to nobody. And that'll be a surprise. This is another um, Tam Jalapeno. Look how beautiful this is, guys. This is Alessia. I've been dying to grow this. It's supposedly supposed to be one of the sweetest and thickest wall pepper. Um, that's what this says on the Baker's Creek site. But I'm up on the top shelf again. These are all true black brandy wines. Um, they're potato leaf variety. And as you guys can see with the overseeding method, you will have some that get are bigger and some that are smaller. Perfectly okay. Just make sure that you don't let them go to flower or start to try to set fruit or anything like that because they're not ready. You want this stock and this stem to be very stocky. Over here, these are my corbachis. So this is a whole tray of corbachis and there's a few habanadas which last year my habanada died so i've not got to taste them yet so i'm really really excited to get a habanada pepper over here over here i have what is this this might be another little habanada all the little baby ones they're cute yeah habanada grand bell Grand Bell. So I think this has a lot of Grand Bells, Habanadas. What is this? Lazia. There are some Corbachis um, right here. The Corbachi. Down um, on this shelf. This is just sitting here. I ran out of space. So I do need to buy another light so I can utilize this shelf. Because you guys see I have this one up and my light is sitting on this. But these are all of my... Matsumoto Asters. I hope I'm saying that right, but that's what they're called right there. Aster Matsumoto. These were started on February 3rd. And I just went, I didn't have, I didn't want to put them in these cups because I was already running out all the time. And these are going in my garden. These take like a hundred days to grow. So you definitely need to start these like 12 weeks, um, 10 to 12 weeks in advance, like I did. And I just had these that I picked up years ago for dollar store. They were like 50 cents on sale. And they're just like little peat type pot things they're biodegradable so you literally just break this whole cube off and you could drop it in the ground and it'll disintegrate so that's probably what i'll do but they're little plugs so what are these five so a 10 20 so i have 23 um aster matsumotos and they actually when they grow they're gonna not just grow one flower they're gonna grow multiple flowers so i'm hoping that this is gonna give me the beautiful cut flower garden area that I really, really want because I want to be able to get into flower selling and um, flower breeding. Down here, we have our cayenne. Cayennes are very tall, spindly type pepper plants. But um, so if you do plant these, make sure that you plant them somewhere where they're not going to like get in the way of other plants because they can get pretty tall, but they don't get too bushy or like leafy, so they're okay. I grew these in a green stalk last year. So check out um like my last harvest, like my last few harvesting videos of the last year. And you'll see these are very, very prolific. And that's just the regular red cayenne. I do want to try the yellow cayenne. These are the black cherry. Now, and I've noticed a lot of my black cherry tomatoes look really like sick and like dull and pale. So I've been trying different treatments. This is when I treat it with Epsom salt. And then I have another one that I treat it with Dr. Earth. And then I have another one that I treat it with um, blood and bone meal to try to figure out exactly what will help them, um, what exactly the plant needs. And whatever plant I see and feel recovered the best, that is what I'm going to use on all of the ones. But you guys can see some of my plants are suffering from sun scald. That's what that is. And they get papery. And you can notice it's the taller ones because the taller ones were over top of these shorter ones. Now, the ones that grew super, super, super healthy tomato wise, like with no problems, just pristine, are these. These are the orange hat tomatoes. Look how pristine this is. How beautiful it is. These only get nine inches tall, guys. So these are really, really tiny. I have one in my kitchen. But yeah, they only get nine inches tall. So that's really good for somebody who says lives in an apartment and they don't even have a balcony. You can grow this and grow like a few um, cut and come again lettuces and grow you some 
onions like this for uh, onion chives. And you could have at least like a little salad bar on your uh, windowsill. I would do all my windowsills just to have enough. But yeah, whatever this is, it said purple rain, but it's gone. It might have fell out or died. Another kerbachi. You can see the different sizes. This is a Dr. Witchy's Yellow. I'm really, really excited for this one because I heard that this one could put on some massive fruit. This is the Big Rainbow. Big Rainbow is also something that could put on massive fruit. But as you can see, he's suffering with sun scald. And I read online that you should not necessarily remove the leaves. You can just leave the leaves on there because the plant still can use those leaves to like try to push, you know, nutrients up to the top. So... I took some leaves off of some and left some leaves on others. But yeah, I'm not worried about these because they will recover. Right here, this is a tomato that I feel like out of the black cherry, which is a new release. Um, Like I showed you guys, the black cherry looks kind of jacked up. And it's been looking like all of them look like that. And another one is the mushroom basket. A lot of the mushroom basket tomatoes, like look at this one. Like, a lot of them are sickly looking, so I'm not really sure why. And I'll take you guys down to the bottom. Over here, I have my eggplants. I have, I'm only growing two types, which are the Rosita and the Chinese eggplant. But as you guys can see, they're doing really, really well. These down here, this whole tray has been treated with Dr. Earth and I really don't feel like the Dr. Earth is what it needs because to me, it seems like they got more yellow. So I'm starting to feel like that it could be overwatering because too much fertilizer can give you yellowing, under fertilizing can give you yellowing and overwatering can give you yellowing. So it's really hard to figure out what it is, but I'm almost 100% sure now that I think it may be too much water. And then over here, a lot of these in the back are black cherry. And as you guys see, the black cherry just really don't look that, that good. More Lesia peppers. Um, this is the purple rain tomato right here. And this purple rain, it's a very, it's a compact variety. So it only gets about three feet tall. Um, that back there, I believe that is a pink brandy wine. It's also a potato leaf variety. And then I go over here, and these have not been separated, but this is just a normal homestead, very similar to grocery store tomatoes. They need to be separated. Um, like I told you guys, I have Cherokee purples that need to be separated. I have more stuff, too. Let me show you. Over here is my little seedling station you can see i have these clamp lights these are only like eight or nine dollars a piece um at home depot they're really really cheap you just get these lights make sure that they have their daylight and that they have a strong enough amount of lumens and you'll be good to go these are some uh red beard um red beard onions that i'm growing and these are more like a tubular onion it's more like a shallot they're more cylindrical so I'm growing these, started these really, really late, but I know that you can harvest the tops and they don't make full bulbs. So I don't feel like that they'll grow faster over here. It's um, wild bergamot. I like to sit them on aluminum foil on top of a heat mat because the foil holds the heat well and it also catches the water. But wild bergamot, bee balm, finally two of them. All of these were started for one. So these are really, really late because I got seeds in late. This is the yellow pear tomato. This is some hyssop. I'm trying to figure out what is this. Um, these are Cosmos. Really bad germination. I got three. These are, let me see. Right here. These are the YOLO Wonder Pepper. Red Russian Kale. This is a Minnesota right here, guys, this is a Minnesota midget melon. And then over here is a muncher cucumber right there in that corner. Um, they do not like now anything in the squash, cucurbit, 
family, they don't want their roots messed with. So I'm thinking of, I'm going to direct seed one in the garden and then put out one of the transplants. And what normally will happen with squash and cucurbits is that if you put out a transplant and you mess with the freaking roots, the one that you planted from seed will mess around and catch up to the one that you planted out by roots and actually do better. So I don't want to take the chances of that. So I'm just going to do one of each. And this is the Vates Blue Scotch Kale right here. I love Vates Blue. Um, it's really, really good. It's like a curly variety. Over here, this is how you know my light is too strong. Look, it's starting to get burned. You can actually give your plants um, sun scald. Look, it has sun scald on the leaf. Because this has been so close. Because I've just been rotating these around. So I'm going to move these and rotate something else in its place. Because this is getting sun scald. That's why I'm really trying to find a hook or something. Because I want to hang these above. Versus like this. And somebody told me about a fan light on Amazon. So I'm going to look into that. But um, yeah, this is the super sweet 100. I just had to plant that. Because I want something that's very, very vigorous. Because I told you guys, this year I'm planting the biggest garden that I ever had. So, with all that said and done, guys, I hope that you got a lot out of this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my plant set up um, and enjoyed seeing what I'm growing this season. I'm super excited. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys who have subscribed, who has liked, who has commented on my channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that this channel will grow and show more people that you can really you know, start your own sustainable garden with minimal things. And I will be here to help you. If nobody else will help you, I will help you. So um, if you have any questions, you can email me urbanplantgirl31 at gmail.com. But make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe, guys. And I will be back with another video.